You happen to be interviewing someone who has a background in bathroom graffiti. You're very fortunate. Not many, not many people have studied it, but uh, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be obscenity or pornographic or have dirty words or whatever. Um, I've been one of those people who have come back out and said, have you been in the restroom? You really got to go in there just to read. Look, up, look above the toilet paper. You'll see something like that, but I don't remember any of them. My company, they clean um, office buildings, restaurants, nightclubs, you know, practically anything that needs to be cleaned as long as it's on a commercial level. Especially in the nightclub, uh, that's where we get most of our graffiti. We had an account, there was graffiti in the bathroom. I gave the employee this um, stuff called goo off, I guess it was, and told her to take off the graffiti with that. She tried it, and unbeknownst to me, it didn't work. It didn't take it off, and the, and the business was so angry the next day that it was still there that they actually fired my cleaning company over it. I'm 70 years old, and I do recall as a, a very young man that the, the graffiti in, in the restrooms was such a hot issue that the principal had to interrupt our classes and talk about this as a um, undesirable thing and how he was out of hand and he felt that the criminal aspect uh, had entered the school that it was destructive and demented and th there was far more repression that uh, sexual matters uh, were still as a result of the victorian notion like my parents and their grandparents so what i think it, it happened uh, in my day was that the degree it's a ratio the degree of repression uh, it can be uh, relatively viewed in the rest bathrooms restrooms during the late 60s you find that people people didn't talk about it quite that much but yet you found that people who went to the restroom and came back out would say I've got to tell you what I just just read in there. And that was usually women, and I, I, I wondered for a long time if women wrote graffiti in the bathrooms. Girls write, I think girls write more graffiti than guys. I really do. Um, if Yeah, I just don't think guys hang out in the restrooms as long as women do. You know, and I think women go in there and they congregate and they talk and they have their, you know, lipsticks and they'll write, they'll be mad and they'll write things or they'll be really happy and they'll, you know, make hearts and, you know, with their name and some other guy's name. and Or if a girl's mad at another girl, then she'll write down, well, I'll do this for a certain amount of money or, you know, here's my telephone number kind of a thing. I joined the army as a young man in the latrines of the soldiers that are that were removed from society where women were not available. It was intense. So, you know, it was everywhere. The thing that uh, I noticed in the army, and it, it happened all over the world during the Second World War, Kilroy was here. Did you, have you ever heard of that? I was born just prior to World War II, and I do remember that there was sort of a, I guess what then would be termed a smutty joke. It was a little statue of a young woman who was obviously pregnant, and down at the bottom it had the sentence, Kilroy was here, meaning Kilroy had been there, he was the one that had caused her pregnancy, and that was a great joke. Maybe it has something to do with the nature of relieving oneself. You know, there's something very natural and basic. It's a very, how will I say, uh, individual matter, but somehow it taps the collective. Maybe it's because of the privacy of, of a stall or something. I don't know. You know, you're, you're like in this little area, and maybe it's because it's secluded and nobody else can see, but you know somebody else is going to come in there afterwards and see it, you know? What I see in, in, uh, in, in the restrooms, in, of course, is, is more intellectual than raw and basic. I have a thought. Part of what I uh, have come to understand about the markings in the caves of Lascaux, uh, where you have hunters and bison and, uh, and animals, was not just simply to record something, but to enforce and to nurture uh, in a mystical sense the uh, consequence of the hunt. Don't you think in a way that uh, in, in terms of graffiti, that there might be some relationship to that? There's probably a ratio there of the availability of expression, sexual expression uh, in the opposite sex and graffiti. I never thought of it as far as, you know, something sexual. Yeah, but it could be. It really could be. 
There is some graffiti in a restroom where they do takeoffs on the word grout, G-R-O-U-T. They tra- and it's written in the grout that goes around the tile. Three strikes in your grout, no grout about it, quit grouting. It's, it, you have to really think about it. You think about it so much, and they're where the urinals are, and you kind of forget what you came in there for, because it, you have to really stop and, and concentrate on that. I think it's poetic sometimes. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Some of the stuff is amusing to me. What is that one? I've been trying to think of it since we've been sitting here. You know, uh, here I sit, all brokenhearted, or... what? You remember that one, right? There were certain things that seemed to be passed around town. So when you would find a statement in one restroom and you'd find it later in another, that was just sort of a copycat syndrome. Why they did it might have been a a catchy phrase. Peace, saw that a lot. Peace symbol, saw that a lot. Gee, now this is, uh, some of this looks like art. Yes, this is. I think it's destructive as far as defacing property. Now, this is funny. This reminds me of some of Matisse's uh, last drawings. And uh, he was drawing with, a, 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 I think, an extension with a chalk because he had arthritis. He, he was in a wheelchair. How did these people do this without getting caught? Oh, that's powerful. That's very good. Like very Keith Herring a little bit. What are the statistics of, do police ever really catch these people? You know, it doesn't have to be obscenity or pornographic or have dirty words or whatever. Some of this looks like art. I think it's stupid. I really do. It's more intellectual than raw and basic. A smutty joke. Graffiti is really, I think it's sad. Oh, that's powerful. I don't think that it's really a form of release for people. What I do comes from the heart, from the spirit. It takes guts. I have never seen anyone actually write on a restroom wall. A lot of the graffiti artists are like we are with our art. I think it's stupid. I think it's sad. I'm a fighter. I'm a warrior. I have principles. This is this is ridiculous. This is like a, an insult to all of us that take this serious. The shadow of mankind. It's called the shadow, where if you don't allow the shadow expression, then it comes out distorted and sick. I think of the terrestrial and celestial. I think of roots and wings, sand and stars. You know, the pull of the earth and the pull of the spirit. It seems that everything I know about our dimension in this reality is a a result of the dance or the interaction of polarity, of opposites. I think, and even the the graffiti artist or everyone that writes on the wall in the bathroom, the sense that it isn't right and yet doing this is somehow part of something very instinctual, very, very natural. The implicate world, in a sense, where we we didn't invent it, it's part of our nature, part of the system. So that's, you know, that's bathroom graffiti. 